All right. Well, hello and welcome to the Alpha Demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software. Today, I'm going to be uh, going through the form view control, but I'm also here to ask, answer your questions. You can type those questions into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel, or you can send them to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S at alphasoftware.com. Now, today's topic on the form view control is based on a question that someone did send in. Uh, but before I get started, I want to make sure that everyone can see my screen and can hear my voice because I am flying solo here today. You could just let me know uh, in the questions box or in the chat window. Yep, looks good. Wonderful. Hey, thanks very much. So today we're going to be talking about the form view control. The form view control is not a new control. It's almost eight years old. And it's funny because I don't think we've done webinars on it that much or certainly haven't recently. But it's a control that is used all the time when building uh, mobile applications especially, but they're good for both web and mobile applications. The form view control is uh, a little bit different than the way you would typically set up a regular form. And we're going to talk about that today or set up a UX. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, let me bring back my control panel here. Great. So let's get started. Um, one of the places that the, con the form view control is used, so let's go over, first of all, let's start with a couple of benefits. So what a form view control lets you do, the reason we invented it was because we were coming into scenarios where uh, we were creating UXs that were very complicated. They had lots and lots and lots of fields in them. And that created two issues. First of all, from the developer's point of view, it was becoming rather complex to work with forms like that. Uh, some solutions involved, and they're good solutions, um, involve using embedded UX components so you can divide up your application into, into different pieces. But the problem is, as the form complexity grows, not only that, it ends up becoming heavier. And by heavier, I mean it, it ends up having a lot more HTML code and JavaScript that needs to get processed by the browser when it's downloaded. And as a result, from the user's point of view, that could be timely. That can make it for a very sluggish uh, performance. And in some cases, it can make it so that your form or your UX control won't load at all because you simply have too much stuff in it. And the last benefit is that it allows you to build very highly customized UI and UX uh, controls so that you have a great deal of control over the user experience when someone is using your application. So today we are going to go through and talk about the benefits of these, and we're going to show you several different examples, and we're even going to put one together for you. And I hope you find this interesting. When I got that question last week, I said, oh, yeah, I know how to add data to a form view control. You just, and then I thought about it, and I was like, wait a minute, it's been a while. And I realized there are a couple moving pieces with a form view control. So I'm going to try to explain this uh, first very simply uh, as to how it works and how it's structured. And I'm going to give you an example. So uh, this is Alpha Transform. Bet you didn't know I was going to sneak that in. But Alpha Transform, you know, is is a uh, product created by Alpha Software. It's written in Alpha anywhere, and it is used for building uh, inspection type um, and data collection types of applications for web and mobile. It's based on the fact that in Prior to Alpha Transform, it seemed that the people were building the same app over and over again in Alpha Anywhere, which is why we came up with Transform. It has a lot of the stuff that you would build into an app automatically handled for you. And Transform makes extensive use of the form view control. So here's an example of how a form view control works. Right here, we're taking a look at a UX component. This is on a phone. And this is an inspection form, and it's got various fields associated with it, such as the date, name, address, city, state, zip, et cetera. Now, if we were only handling text fields on a form, it would actually be fine not to use a form view control. I just tried it the other day just for fun to see how many text fields I can load into a UX before there's performance degradation, and it was something like 750. It was a ridiculous number, way more than anyone would use. But that's just for text fields. When you're talking about things like signature capture controls, audio controls, and things like that, that starts to where that starts to get heavy. So what we do instead, when we're uh, is instead of making these fields, what this really is is a display-only type of interface. 
So if you want to edit something, like in this case, the client's name, what you would do is you would tap on that. And by tapping on it, it would open something that we refer to as an editor within what we call an editor set. And this is the editor and editor set over here on the right. It has a place where if you tap on that, the keyboard will come up and you can type things in. And it also has controls that let you move from field to field in the form. So if I had hit this right arrow, or if I had swiped right with my finger, it would take me from the client name field down to the address field. Again, I could swipe once I'm on address and go to city, and then I could swipe to state and then to zip and so on. And it's actually a fairly quick way of filling in a bunch of fields in a row. You type, you swipe, you type, you swipe. Okay, so the interesting thing is this input control here is the exact same input control that's used to enter the address, the city, the state, and the zip. We only have one control, one input control, and it's shared by all of these fields. So how does that work? Well, let's take a look at the typical form view configuration. Now this is typical. There is, There are other ways of doing it, but typically we use a list control to power the form view. A list control, as you know, is an object that you can place on your UX component uh, that lets you collect data, it lets you view data uh, with a detail view, it lets you enter data, you can search data, but it also knows how to talk to databases, it handles things like synchronization, it works offline, it keeps data persisted. So it's a really powerful control. We've talked a lot about it and we bring it up in almost every webinar, I think. So this is the basis of the app, is it's a list control. That's where the data is going to be stored. But instead of using the typical uh, detail view that you would often have with a list, where you have a bunch of fields that the list can then uh, open up so that you can make changes to data, we instead use something called a form view control. So the form view control and the list control are tied together. When you tap on a particular item in the list, you'll see the data displayed in the form view control. And that's what, exactly what we saw in the last picture. This is the form view control right here. When I then, oops, uh, when you tap then on a particular image in that form view control, it opens up what's called an editor set. And that editor set knows how to handle the type of data that you have assigned to it. So, um, so these all work together. Now this is just the block diagram. This might be hard to imagine. So let's take a look directly in the UX builder and see what a basic scenario would look like. Now this is probably the most basic that you can get. You could get a little bit more basic if we, were, if we eliminated this top container and this bottom container. But basically these are the three building blocks. There's the list control, which holds the data, talks to the databases and so on. There's the form view, which lets you see data, basically lets you see details about whichever item you've selected in that list. And then we have an editor. And this editor in here has got a text box control right in here. It also has a couple other controls. It has a static text uh, above here, which is, while it says static, it's actually dynamically filled in with a field label. And if you have any help associated with that field, that'll appear underneath the text box. Below that, there are some buttons for OK and to, to save or uh, and another button to cancel. And that's all wrapped up in an editor. And when you create an editor, it needs to be placed in this superset here called an editor set, because an editor set may have more than one editor. This might be the editor that you use for entering text, but you might have another editor that you have just for signatures, another editor you have, say, for photo annotation, and so on. And you can actually do an awful lot in the editor set. So I'm looking forward to showing you that in a bit. So I think probably right now is the time is for us to dive into a live demo where I'm going to show you how to put together this really simple example and get it to work. And we're going to mostly get it to work, except at the end, we're going to have a little bit of a stumbling block where we're going to have to add a tiny bit of JavaScript. So I'm just going to tell you that right up front, but don't worry, I'll show you how that works too. So let's pop over to my machine here and here i am in alpha anywhere and i'm going to go into new and i'm going to choose a new web component a new ux component this probably looks pretty familiar to our regulars here and i'm going to start with a blank ux component i don't have to start blank because there's actually quite a few examples that have got the form view control in here and if i filter it by form view 
you'll see I've got three. One's for tablet. This one is for phone or tablet. This one uses a disconnected uh, type of thing. So these are cool templates to play around with to see how the form view control works. But there are a lot of other resources for learning how the form view control works too, and I'm going to get to those. So I'm going to start with a blank. I'm going to say OK. And here is my blank component. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put in a list control. So I'm going to add a list. And we are going to double click on that list and populate it with data. We can use static data. We can use, um, actually, you know what we'll do? Let's use the Northwind database. That's always our favorite one. So let's go over here to connection string. We'll choose our Northwind database. And the table we'll use, the table we always use, it seems, is the customer's table. So we'll go ahead and use that. Field list, we basically, I think, want, uh, let's say, name of the company, name of the contact, and let's do city, and let's do country. Okay, so we've got those four laid out. Now, the only other, there are two things I need to do here. First of all, I, I need to have a list layout. If I clicked OK now, it would warn me that you didn't list any fields in your table. So I'm going to go ahead and just put, let's just say contact name, or let's say company name. That'll be the, the only thing I display here in this list. But here in this list, I also need to turn on the detail view. Now, typically, when you have a detail view with a list, you have a bunch of other controls that are saved here, one for each of the fields that you could conceivably update. But we're not going to do it that way because we're going to be using a form view control. So it isn't a necessarily a one-to-one -one correlation between each of the fields in your table to each of the controls on the uh, on the UX. You only need one control for each type of thing. So if you have 10 text box controls and one signature control, you really only need two controls, one for text and one for signature. So I'm going to leave this here, uh, has detailed view, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And if, uh, oh, we'll let it set it to primary key because we want to be able to update it. So it's updated that for me. That's great. And we're going to call this simple form. And I'm just going to save that. And let's just go ahead and take a look at it. Working preview. And it should just be a list with only one field in it. There it is. Terrific. Works as expected. So now we're going to go into design mode and we are going to add our form view control. So I'm going to click add controls and I'm going to type form uh, view. There we go. And there's our form view control. In fact, I can move that up above the list if I want to. So now we need to uh, configure that form view control. And the first thing you do is you tell it what the data source is. In other words, where's that form view control getting its data from? It's going to be getting it from a list control. Like I said, that's the typical setup. Your other option is to do it using uh, static JSON and I think and uh, uh, JavaScript and well, I guess you can pull it right out of a UX control. I'm not sure how that would work. But a list is what's typically done. So we're going to choose the list, and then we're going to select the list that we just built. So there's list one. And we'll click OK. All right. Now, if I went and looked at it now, it would look like anything. You know why? Let me show you. Looks exactly the same as before. OK. And the reason is what I want to do is I want to configure this form view to display those fields that I want to be able to edit. So I'm going to go into fields, and it already knows about those four fields that I selected because it's now connected to the list. So I'm going to choose that one, and I'm going to say that I want to use the editor set of, oops, hang on, can't do that yet. Let me go to form layout, my bad. And I'm going to start inserting some, some items. So the items to insert, whoops, genie, add item. So I'm going to say uh, company name. I think I can add all four at once. I sure can. So now they're all listed here. That's terrific. And if I click OK, I should now see them back here on Working Preview. There we go. So I do see them. So now when I click on a particular item in the list, say around the horn, you'll notice that it's now populated those fields in my form view control. All right, cool. But these are just uh, these are just text fields. They don't really do anything. I can click on them 
I don't really do anything. But what I want to do is I want to make it set up so that I can actually edit the values that are here in this list. So to do that, I need to build what's called an editor set. So we're going to do that right now. And I'm just going to go to controls and I'm going to say editor. And here are the different ones that I can use in an editor set. So the one I'm going to use is called the editor set text area because it's text box controls that we're going to choose. And when I select that, we'll call it editor one, that's fine. It's going to do some nice stuff for me. It's going to build out, it's going to put in my text box. It's going to put in the field label above the text box. Again, I can remove this, edit it, whatever. And it's going to put the help text, if there is any, uh, below the text box. Uh, it also adds a save and a cancel button so that I can update, so that I can save the uh, the values or, or cancel or, or whatever. So that's all in there. If I go in here now, it still won't work, but I will, what I need to do though, is I need to go into the form view and I need to tell it how I want to handle each one of my fields. So in this case, the company name field, let's go back here to fields. The company name field is going to use the editor I just built, editor set. That's weird. I should see my, I should see the editor set that I, oh, I know what I did wrong. And I said this at the beginning. I bet someone here can guess. Let's see, does anyone get it? No. All right. What I did wrong uh, is oh, cancel. Yes. If I move my go to webinar interface out of there, I would have seen it. You see here up here, it says layout errors. My editor needs to be placed into an editor set. So the component does not contain any editor sets. How do you put it in an editor set? You may ask. Let me show you. You do it by selecting the editor, and then I'm going to go down here into containers. And an editor set is nothing more than a fancy container. So I'm going to choose that container, and I'm going to go down and find editor set, which is right there. And voila, there's my editor inside my editor set. So I should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead back into the form view, and we're going to go back into the fields. And this time, my editor set should appear. There it is. So I'm going to say I want editor set one, and I want editor one for that field. And I'm just going to do that for each one of the fields. So editor set one, editor one. We're going to do the same here for the city and for the country. Cool. OK. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And let's see what we've got going. Let's pop over here to work in preview. And now I think I can. If I choose, for example, Alfred's, and I want to change the contact name by clicking on it, whoops, let me move my screen out of the way. Actually, it might be helpful if I maximize this. You'll see underneath here is the contact name. Now, it's typical not to place your editor underneath the list. It, it often will come in, it slide in from the side, or you may have it up at the top. There's lots of places to do it, but this is just how I handled it. So here I've got Berlin, here I've got Germany, and under here are my save and cancel buttons. So if I wanted to change from Germany to, I don't know, um, France, I could go ahead and save that. And it's saved. But it's only saved here in this form control. And this is the point where I said we might get a little bit stuck. Let me show you what I mean. If I go in here to uh, Anna Trujillo and Peredados y helados, uh, and I say I want to change the name of the company. Let's say I just remove the S from the end of it. Okay, I've removed it, and I click Save. It appears correct here, but notice it did not update in the list, and that's because we need to basically tell the list that it needs to update, and we do that by using a little bit of JavaScript. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. Let's go back into Design. Actually, let's go into uh, web projects because I have one pre-built, which has got the JavaScript I need. I'm pretty sure it's that one. Yep. And I did it as a JavaScript action. So 
Let me just edit the action. I'll grab this code and we'll be right back and I'll show you the code and how it works. Okay, cancel out of that. No. And, oops. Uh, cancel. And close. Nope. Okay. Simple form. Here we go. All right, so we're going to go back here into design. And we need to add a little bit of JavaScript to tell uh, Alpha Anywhere that after the form view has been updated to go ahead and put those updates directly into the list that it's connected to. So we're gonna do that first using a button, but then I'm gonna show you another way to do it that's a little bit uh, better than that. So I'm gonna say add control, and I'm just gonna type in button. And we're gonna say updates list is the name of our button. I'll double click on that and I'm going to set, I'm going to just paste in some JavaScript, text mode, paste it in. All right, let's take a look at this JavaScript. And actually, I've got it blown up on the screen, I think in my PowerPoint presentation, so that we can see it a little bit better, see what's going on. So this is what's going on. Inside uh, my JavaScript, I'm first setting a variable called object to to basically get the pointer to this particular object, to the form view control. And I'm storing that in something called obj. Then I'm creating another variable, which is contains the data that's in that obj form view. Okay, that's the, that's the format for that. Next, I'm going and I'm finding the list control and I'm grabbing a pointer and that's lobj, list object. And then I'm setting a variable r equal to list object selection, the, basically the, the first one there. And then I'm telling it to update the table row that it's found with the data that I have entered in the form view control. So this is the code that you need. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually paste that directly in to the chat so that it's there for you. So if you're lucky enough to be seeing this live, you can simply grab that code and use it in your own boxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go back and say, play from current slide. Nice, and we'll go back to the demo. All right, here we are back in the demo. And I've added a button that runs this code that I just walked you through kind of how it works. I'm going to click Save. I'm going to go into Working Preview. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose someone. Let's choose uh, Elados again. We're going to choose the company name field. We're going to change that from Elados to Elado. I'm going to click Save. Again, it's not updated in the list yet. So I'm going to click this new button that we added, the Update List button. I do that, you'll see it change. The S got dropped off to the end. Now that's a pain in the neck. You wouldn't want to do that every time you hit save as go and ha have to do an update. So you might want to just stick that update code in the save button. So first it saves and then it updates. Let me show you how you would do that because it's actually pretty easy. What I would do, and we tend to do this is we use JavaScript actions only because it keeps your code in a centralized place. So I'm gonna go into JavaScript actions and I'm going to create a new action. And I'm gonna call this one update list. Not very original, I know. And that says that's okay, but you'll notice it doesn't have, it's not actually defined as anything. So I need to edit this action. And again, I'll just paste in that code that we had, bang, and save it. So when I run this action, it's gonna run that code. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to the save button in my editor set, open that up, and you'll see all that does is it uh, sets to close the editor after it's committed, and then it tells it to commit the record to the form view control. And now down here, 
we're going to tell it to update that list and we're going to do it by running that action javascript so to do that down here there's a little link called run a javascript action we're going to click on that and choose our update list and so now that's going to run so if we've done it properly we'll go back into working preview Let's choose the same record again. This time we're going to change it from a lotto's back to a lotto. You scroll down on the screen so I can get to the save button. And the save button should now do the save and the update all at once. And sure enough, there it is. So that is the very simple case for setting up uh, that, that's sort of the most basic thing that you would need if you were setting up a form view control. But form view controls have got a lot more power than that. And I'm going to start showing you a couple more examples. So let's pop back over here to my presentation. And the first one I want to show you is called the form view tablet. This is a video that was made. It was made a while ago, but it's still, it's still a pretty good video. And the nice thing about it is I was able to find the sample um ux that goes behind it so i'm going to give you the link to that ux so after you watch this video it's pretty short like four minutes um you'll be able to uh play with that yourself with the link that i give you so i'm going to go ahead and hit play and this is what i'm going to call our uh a little bit more complicated than the previous one but it's not our not our granddaddy of the complication we'll show you that one in a bit now, because this is pre-recorded audio, sometimes the level is different. So I'm going to warn you, as I always do, if you're wearing headphones, just uh, be prepared, pre prepared to have that uh, volume button ready, because sometimes it comes out louder than, than my voice. So here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and play this one, uh, the form view one, form view tablet video. Here is a uh, more in-depth example of a uh, list with a form view control to edit the, um, the the list data that is designed for a tablet, so that there's um, uh, that the list the editors are on the same screen on the same panel as the um, as the form view control. So there's no sliding in of of uh, a panel that obscures the form view. So uh, first of all, let's run it, and then I'll explain how what's going on here. So I'll click on a row, and there's the form view. If I click on a field, the editor basically gets pushed down from the top over here. So I can go and change that, and then hit the next button to go to the next control. And I can keep on editing like this, and then when I'm done, I can close this, and now save the form edits back to the list and so there's the edits uh, back in the list. So basically this pattern is using the following. First of all you'll see that in the editor itself uh, when I chose the um, uh, editor text box that puts on a save and cancel button. I've deleted the save and cancel button and I've put those actions in the control bar. So basically what we have is we have a panel layout well actually let's look at it like this. We'll go into structure we have a panel layout and the panel layout contains a panel card and then another panel layout that is set to left to right so we have the first panel card on the left and then the panel layout on the right so the panel card on the left contains the list and then the panel card on the the panel layout on the right contains two panel cards it contains uh, the first panel card which uh, contains the editor set and the second panel card which contains the uh, form view control but this editor set control here has been set to docked so if we go back and look at uh, panel card number two we can see that we've given it a size of 150 pixels but we've said uh, collapse before so that means that that panel card two is not going to be visible but when it is visible when we show it it's going to have a height of 150 pixels and you can see here that we've set the layout here to uh, top to bottom. So then um, <clears throat> on the editor set here on the show JavaScript we've just said basically show panel card number two so that basically causes this hidden this docked panel card to suddenly become visible. Then in the panel in the control bar itself 
we've got actions for next and previous to go to the next edit the next field um, without having to go back to the form and click on another field so basically form view navigate next and previous then we have a save here which is the, the code that I picked up off the save button but I've also added code to hide panel card uh, um, to hide um, <coughs> the docked panel that was shown so to hide panel card number two and then we give focus back to panel card uh, number number one so basically um, and then cancel edit basically this is the code that was on the cancel button for an individual editor and then here's the uh, code that hides the um, um, that that hides the uh, uh, the docked panel basically. So uh, this is a, a pattern that you could use for a tablet where you want to show the um, editors on the same screen as the form itself. Thanks. All right, let's pop back to my presentation here. All right, I hope that was interesting. Um, so you'll get to play with this form view control yourself. Let me just pop ahead and give you the link to that because you probably want it. For the transform tablet example component that I just showed you, the link is, it was just up on screen. I made this one a bit.ly link. Um, so that in case you are watching this on video later on and you can't just copy and paste it out of the chat window here, at least it's not a ton of typing. It's just bit.ly slash AA form view, AA and F are capitalized. So I'm going to paste that link into the chat window. And that's going to download as a zip. You're going to place that zip. Uh, you're going to unzip that zip and take that UX component and place it into your project and uh, be able to use it like that. Now, the second video I want to show you so far. What I've shown you is probably not wowing you when it comes to, to UI or UX. And, and that was one of the features that I mentioned right at the very beginning, is that you can make some really cool looking um, uh, designs for your user interface. But I really hasn't shown that. This next video is going to show that off. But before I get there, there is uh, someone did ask a question about sort of how do you arrange these things on the screen. So I'm going to give you a little example about that. So let's say you didn't want the editor set, like in our working preview, it's this kind of a, this is not a, not a delightful UI UX experience, we'll say, um, to have, to have to do this and have everything down below here. What you might want to have, for example, is to have your company name over here, have this list here, and then have the edit controls over here on the right, or maybe just below. And that's just simply a matter of where you put them in your design. So, what we're going to do is we'll take these editors set and we're going to move it up here underneath the form view control and then i'm going to shut off the break after that form view control and i'm going to make this one here let's say take up 33 percent of the screen and then the editor set can take up the other 66 points whatever uh, I don't think I even have to set that. So if I've done it that way, let's just take a look. And if I fail, don't worry, I've got another one I can show you. Okay, that became 100%. Oh, I see what's going on. So if I choose that, I see it's dropped down below. So what I would want to do is probably put these in containers. Let me show you a slightly more pre-baked one. Let's pop over to simple form view, form view simple. And in this case, I have enclosed it in a container and I'll show you why that's nice to do. What it's let me do in this case, working preview, is when I choose bang, for example, this, I've placed my editor set over here on the right. I did that by placing it in inside a container. And I think I could have taken that same thing. Let's just try it. If it blows up, I'll show you how to do it next time. 
Uh, and let's put that there, shut off the, the break. And let's take a look at what the preview and see what we got. this I choose Germany yep yeah, and it's right here on the right so I can make this container nicer I could space it out I could put bar around it I could say update field there's a lot of stuff I could do to clean that up and I'll show you some more uh, nicer examples in our next video but basically you can move the editor set any place that you like you can even put it on a panel card you can have that panel card invoked when you come in that's what we do with alpha transform um, I suspect you could do it in a, a pop-up window uh, there's probably a bunch of ways uh, to show it so let me go ahead and close that. If you do have questions though about specifically how do you get something to look exactly like X, you want to just sort of draw it, draw it up, uh, even if you want to just sketch it out on a I don't know, paint or something and, and send it to us at guides at alphasoftware.com. We'd be happy to answer any questions as to how to get things to lay out properly on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and say, sure, we'll save that, why not? We'll close that. Let's go back to the presentation. I'm going to show you a slightly more uh, advanced version of this. Again, this video is a little bit old, but it's it's really got some cool stuff in it. So um, let me go ahead and play that right now. Uh, standard warning applies. Just uh, watch your ears <laughs> when I hit play. This is a sample application built with the new Alpha Anywhere tablet optimized forms capability. You see it running here in a browser on an iPad. It could also be delivered as a hybrid app using PhoneGap. The application shows one way you could build a form for recording the results of an automobile inspection. It shows some of the level of customization you could do to display and edit form like data. We'll start by um, adding a new record. Let's go in and look at it. And we have at the top here uh, controls for editing. It's the inspection date that it's asking for. Down here you can see parts of the form. Um, and you can choose the date this way. You can get to today with the today button. There's more information up here. I could find out about what I need to do in terms of what date. Uh, let's just leave it for today. We'll type the inspector's name in. We've got the normal keyboard comes up and the inspector is Dan B. And uh, let's um, type in the owner and the owner is uh, uh, Jim Jones. Now well, the phone number, that's just numbers, so uh, we put up a uh, numeric keypad for that. And 617-555-2548. Uh, it automatically puts in the, uh, the hyphens, go to the next field. Uh, this, these are custom editors uh, that are built using ALF anywhere. And um, We'll go with Toyota and the model type in Prius, uh, Prius, and the model year is 2009, and just double tap here to get blue, and it's Massachusetts, and license plate. Uh, here we bring up a custom keyboard, and the custom keyboard has numbers and letters together. Uh, there's no need for shifting because that's, that's all uppercase. So it's, let's say, A5V12D. And we, uh, we have arrow keys and the next button. Uh, so uh, I can move back and forth up here. I can also tap on it to get to the place I want. Um, and let's uh, go to the next field, the VIN number. I'll just make one up for here. Not gonna... And it knows when you've hit the number of characters necessary. Uh, go next. Odometer four four five eight six. Next. Now we're on the next part um, of the form, and here we can look at the front wiper braids. Are they in good shape? This is details about it. Uh, we can do pass or fail. We'll pass this one. Pass. 
This can get kind of tedious, uh, but you can also just swipe on them like this to, um, to set the values. And uh, oh, let's say in this case that we want the tail lights to fail, you swipe the other direction, swipe this direction, you know, swipe whichever way. It makes it nice and easy. Uh, you can customize it to be that you just hit pass, pass, pass up here if you want. You have complete control of this because it's, it's completely programmable. Um, and the other section over here has even more. It has more of these pass fail, but it also lets you type in some numbers. So let's say the uh, the tread the pass 32 and the pass. Uh, let's see, it's still nine. It's got nine, etc. And you can see how it fills this out appropriately. Um, and we can do these and hit this one RPM is that's 950. And finally, we're in the last section. The last section here, I can type in uh, instructions or paste in instructions, maybe from emails that came from the customer to put that in. Uh, I can also uh, take a photo, or in this case, I'll take it uh, from a library. And here I have a, uh, a photo of uh, part of the automobile. And over here, we can take notes. We can take written notes. And um, down here, whatever we write, we write nice and big. Uh, so car and and then doesn't f notice I write big down here and it's shrunk down small over here. Uh, I can't fit much, but if I come down here and I drag it over, I can just uh, good con. Give in mileage. Not oh, hit, hit return. And this has undo. In fact, I can undo and redo. I have an eraser that I can erase with. We can undo that. Um, I can change the zoom level. Let's go here. Uh, say note. Note this and go here, go full screen, and I'll draw, draw in kind of an automobile. Here's some wheels. That's the rear, that's the front. And let's get out of that, zoom in a bit, zoom in down here change to red and change to blue. Let's bring this right over here. And we can say that it has deep scratch. Finally, let's go over here and sign it. So, here you've seen ink, we have ink, we have photographs, we have text, we have checklists, and uh, we have custom types of editing. Uh, we can go back up here and we see that that's now been filled in with the right values. All of the editing controls that you've seen in this application, including the custom keyboards and keypads, as well as the checklist items were built using normal Alpha Anywhere controls and are easily customized as you need them. The photo capturing, resampling, and uploading capability, as well as all of the ink functionality that you just seen here, is built in and highly customizable. Adding or changing items on the form is done using straightforward dialog boxes and property sheets with optional further customization using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. For more information about Alpha Anywhere, go to www.alphasoftware.com. Thank you. All right, and we're back. Let me just switch screens again. There's my screen, cool. All right, so one other thing that's super nice about the form view control is it's one of our best documented controls. And I'm actually gonna take you on a little bit of a tour of the document of that right now. You could find the documentation. Um, you could click this link, uh, 
actually you can't where you are you can only look at this link but if you simply go to documentation.alphasoftware.com and you do a search for form view control you will you will find that link and i'm going to take you on a little tour of that because there's a lot of cool stuff in documentation i want to make sure that uh you, you see what you see what we have all right so let's pop over to documentation form view control here we go all right so actually i'm going to start right from the top and just do a search for form view control so you know what article i'm talking about let me type that in and the one we want is down here form view control now the form view control this will provide a basic explanation as to how it works this will give you some videos. It'll show you examples for tablets and for phones. This should look familiar. This is the one you just saw a video of. But what's nice about some of these other ones, I'm gonna go ahead and back up into uh, the form view control, is that many of the examples that you see here in the form view control, like say, capturing images in a list, the documentation is actually much more tutorial style. So it shows you an example of something that you can build like this interface right here. But then it actually takes you step by step through each one of the steps to build the sample that, that is up on the screen. So it's actually a, a pretty nice uh, interface there. We also have, let's see if I go back to form view control. I'll choose that page. Let me just keep scrolling down. We have a whole bunch of videos here on uh how to use the the templates for the form view control the ones that i was just showing you uh the ux templates we have videos on how to use the editors and editor sets so there's an awful lot of stuff in here if you get stuck of course if you get stuck you can always send an email to guides g-u-i-d-e-s at alpha software.com so that kind of wraps up what i wanted to talk about today when it comes to the form view control i hope you found this uh, useful and entertaining. Again, if you do have questions, uh, I do have a minute or so to take them. You can type them into the questions box of the go to webinar control panel. Otherwise, what we'll do is just send an email to guides. Uh, and let's see. Uh, can I show you how to generate a custom keyboard? I don't know how to do that right off the top of my head. Uh, that took a little bit of JavaScript, but it's a really good suggestion. Uh, so why don't I put that down? For, uh, for maybe a next session webinar. Custom keyboard. Yeah, the custom keyboards make a huge difference when it comes to data entry. Being able to do things like put at signs on the keyboard for typing in email addresses or just numbers, things like that can really speed data entry. So let me, I'll, I'll come up with a, an example as to how, to how to build your own. So we'll make sure we handle that. All right. Well, that looks like it. I may, we may not have a Wednesday webinar. If that is the case, you will get an email um, next Wednesday only because I have jury duty. So I hope I get someone to cover for me, but we'll see. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much, everyone, for showing up. Thanks for asking questions. And again, keep those questions coming to guides at alphasoftware.com. Hope to see you at our next webinar. Until then, take care and stay well. Bye-bye.